Hi guys, as you may or may not have seen going around YouTube at the moment, there is the tag, which is the five things I would tell my pregnant self. So it's basically if you were going to look back or you could sort of transport through time and tell your pregnant self something or five things, what you would tell them. Um, obviously, Hayley was my first child, so it was my first pregnancy, so there was probably a ton I could think of. I have narrowed it down to just the five things so I can, if I was traveling through time, I could get it over really quickly. My number one thing I probably would have told myself is to stress less. I was stressing out so badly about the health of Hazel, if the pregnancy was going to go okay, if the birth was going to be okay, if I had everything ready, if I had everything, everything cleaned, if I had absolutely every item I could possibly think of and never need. I didn't need to stress so badly and I don't think it did me any good stressing over everything as much as I did. I know it's normal and first time mums, especially pregnancy, stress out about everything and I literally stressed out about everything. <laughs> you name it, I was stressed and I it it just took away from the experience of things so that that's number one would be telling myself to stress less. Number two would be to eat healthy. Eat healthily. Yes, you can have chocolate, you're pregnant, go ahead. But eat healthily. I use pregnancy as an excuse. My weight prior to Hazel was not good. And during pregnancy, I use pregnancy as an excuse to eat more. And I really don't think that I, well, I know that I shouldn't have done. And I know that I, I should have eaten a lot better. And because of my weight issues and the way I was eating, I ended up getting gestational diabetes. So, um, which wasn't the, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, um, but I did end up going on insulin. So I had to inject myself with insulin and that's a whole extra stress again. And a whole thing that you don't really want. Uh, luckily for me, Hazel was fine and she measured fine through the whole process, but it did mean that there were complications towards the end. And I did have to drive to the hospital two, three times a week to get everything checked. Um, it might not necessarily been just what I was eating and a lot of you know young, healthy mums do get gestational diabetes, but the way I was eating and the weight that I was definitely added to the risk of it and it definitely made me feel a lot sicker than I probably would have done during pregnancy uh, because of that. So let me know below if there's any mums out there that who did go through gestational diabetes in your experience. I'm hoping that I don't get it in my next pregnancy uh, I am at higher risk now. I'm on a big weight loss journey to try and lose some weight. Um, so if I do get pregnant again, th hopefully, um, and I am at a better, healthier weight range and I do eat healthy and I do get it, I've done and I can sit there and say I've done everything I possibly can to try and avoid gestational diabetes. And I'm just unfortunately one of those people that do get that when they're pregnant. Um, but yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely, number two would say, you know, hold back on the, the amount of pasta and the amount of sweets and sugars that you're eating. <laughs> um, it may it may deter you in the end because you do have a lot more baby weight to lose. So I might put a picture somewhere of my pregnancy or a picture of me pregnant. Um, I was pretty big and I put on quite a few kilos with Hazel and I, like I said, I was big before. So it was a big blowout um, and I'm, I'm paying for it now. I'm, I've been six months on a weight loss journey, lost about 25 kilos and I'm still going. So one of them would be eat healthy and just watch your weight a little bit, um, especially if you're, if I was heavier before I got pregnant. Number three would be to rest and relax, which kind of goes against the eating healthy because you should be a bit more active. But I was so busy stressing out about everything, which was my number one point, that I didn't enjoy the time of just relaxing. I didn't have a child for so all those um, first time pregnant ladies out there, just enjoy the fact that you can sit down whenever you want. Now with Hazel, I don't get a chance. I'm currently filming now because she's in bed in her nap. But yeah, you just enjoy the time to get the rest that you need, get the relaxation, don't stress out and have the naps that you need to, especially in that first trimester, I was exhausted and I was working full time and, and it was just so busy. I just, you just need to sort of cancel back on your plans with people, cancel back on the housework. I know they, they it's an excuse when you have a newborn, but you can use it as an excuse when you're pregnant too. Seriously, just cruise on just relax and enjoy the time you have now because when the baby comes i promise you it is hard work and you won't get the time to sleep so enjoy the time now just to chill out let that baby grow really healthily and just relax and have naps and just chill it seriously um number four would have been 
um, cherish the now. So I was so desperate to get pregnant when I was pregnant, I was looking ahead and I kept, I'm one of those people that looks ahead all the time and I don't necessarily cherish what I have now and I really should do. Um, as far as depending on where your life is, you might be on second, third, fourth pregnancy. Uh, for my first, obviously, I wanted, I should have cherished the time that me and my husband had as just me and my husband more. Uh, we didn't take a baby moon. I know people take a baby moon, and that is definitely a way to cherish the time that you have now and just the lifestyle that you have now. Do the things that, you know, just leave the house and then with five seconds to spare and, and go to the movies and, you know, just, just enjoy the time that you have just as the pair of you. And again, I will do the same next pregnancy. Uh, with Hazel you know I'll enjoy the one-on-one -on -one time that I get with her and the, the you know the, the family of three that we have right now and just to cherish it now and you still be positive and looking forward to obviously the new baby coming but enjoy what you have now because you'll never get it back you'll never be just you two you and your husband or your partner and and you'll never be just that little family of three with your one child that you can devote your entire attention to uh, things will change and you just need to yes look forward and be positive to it and i think i just needed to cherish the now and really appreciate what we had then my fifth thing that i had was enjoy the pregnancy just I felt so ill with, with my diabetes, gestational diabetes, that I was miserable. I was severely overweight, so I comfort ate, so I got bigger, I had diabetes. It was a whole mess, but I absolutely loved having her in my stomach. I loved the weirdness of feeling her in there and kicking, and as much as you complain that she's in your rib cage, and, and it's just so funny to feel, and you are uncomfortable, and it's it's really hard to look past that, but I would tell myself to look past it and enjoy the moment because there was one turning point for me and that was when the moment my pregnancy ended and I'd given birth to Hazel and we'd moved to the maternity ward and Hazel was sitting in, well wrapped up and she was sitting in the little uh, carry cots that they have in the hospital and I just burst into tears and it was because I felt my stomach like a little niggle in my stomach and I instantly just went <gasps> and grabbed my stomach and then as you would normally as I had normally and then realized that's just my uterus contracting now and that's not Hazel. Hazel's like distended from me. She wasn't connected to me and she was separated. We weren't one anymore. We were two people and she was completely detached to me and sitting over in the other side, sort of I, the other side of the room. She wasn't. She was just not, not part of me and it wasn't the pair of us together doing things and it wasn't when I go and move or do something or go away that she's always with me you know she's different to me now and and for whatever reason after you know after birth you're very emotional but my husband didn't even know what was going on through my head when I did it but then I explained to him like she's just not in me she's not part of me she's separated now she's her own little person which is so great and it is such a big big milestone and a momentous thing to get over but cherish the time that you are together you they are inside you they are connected to you it is the most incredible thing you'll ever experience and you spend so much time especially with infertility just trying to get pregnant trying to get there and you really should enjoy it as much as uncomfortable it is just enjoy every moment because you may you might not get it again I'm hoping that I get pregnant again and I'm hoping that happens but just enjoy being one enjoy being with them and feeling them and having them everywhere with you because you won't get that again with that child and it's just such an amazing experience so that's my five things I would tell my pregnant self um, if, if you've got any that you would have told your pregnant self write them below I'd love to hear them and especially if you had gestational diabetes I'd love to know how your experience is and how you went with it obviously I'm going to be doing pregnancy vlogs with my next pregnancy if everything goes well and if we do get gestational diabetes again I will go in all the nitty-gritty details of that and if I go on insulin um, but yeah I'd love to hear if you had gestational diabetes and your experiences as well and so any pregnant any tips that you would have given your pregnant self or things you would have said let me know below that would be great and that's it thanks guys bye um, and then we have hey, what the eye what did, what did you do hey, yeah.